All right, the project for the day is to modify this tap so that it is basically a piloted bottom tap for on the back of the index centers for the Atlas milling machine. The bore on that's a three-quarter inch bore, and then it's tapped on the end for a tail cap, basically, the same as on the Atlas six-inch lathe. So, going through, I had this tap, and this tap's been kicking around in my box for who knows how long. And um, I could have just ordered a tap, but this one I think has been used enough to where it, uh, it's still a good functional tap, but it's probably getting a little bit dull, at least on the beginnings of the threads. So what I'm going to do, at least for right now, is we're going to go ahead and turn this into basically a bottom tap and uh, shorten the threads way up on it and uh, then just relieve it so it's a, basically a piloted tap, which I don't know if I'll use it as a piloted tap, but we'll have that ability with it. And what I could do is I could just take and shorten this tap up and, and turn it into a short bottom tap. But since I've got this and I'm playing today, we might as well use the little corn tool and cutter grinder to cut it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it back so we've only got the last, oh, half or five-eighths of an inch of threads. And then we'll just chamfer the end. We'll turn the rest of it to a three-quarter inch diameter or just under a three-quarter inch pilot. Now it's a five-flute tap, so of course there's not a... I don't have a really good way to measure across it. And what I did for a quick and easy ring gauge, basically, is I took a piece of scraggly old one-inch stock I had, we drilled it, bored it, and uh, then reamed it, so we've got, we're just over three-quarters of an inch, and this is not a real important dimension anyway. So we can do a nice sliding fit with this tap into our pilot, and that'll be plenty good. You know, we can spend hours doing this, and maybe I can make it better than what I'm going to make it quick and easy and maybe I couldn't but there's no need so what I've done is I've taken the corn and I've got got a rag let me bring it down here so you can see I've got a rag set up to protect the ways a little bit and uh, I've got just a coarse straight wheel in here now what I did before I got to this setup is I had it aligned on center I had it indexed the way I would normally sharpen a reamer or or something of that nature and we were pointed in from this end I uh, found my center went ahead and dropped it so we've got a little clearance there and then I've actually backed this off and dropped it down quite a bit so once we go back into proper positioning we'll be back on center with about 20,000 clearance trailing but I just put this wheel back in it's running true now but I think we'll just go ahead and touch it up we've got it set up now unfortunately after I just did the wheel guards why this this wheels a little bit too big to fit in that wheel guard so I'm just going to run it free we've got the the uh, stop set here so that's how we'll adapt our depth and we're just sliding on our front rail so let me go ahead and run it across there and, and uh, see if we can't get this just a little truer than what it is we can get it unlocked here so now we can swing this way plus we can slide back and forth Alright, so there's our wheel running true. Like I say, we've already set our clearance for grinding this. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing the headstock back around. We're going to remove the short bar in here. We're going to add our long bar with a center in it, just like this. I think I'm probably going to use my depth stop as the end of the rails themselves. So let me move this all around and move the camera so we've got a little bit better view. Now our tilting bracket's already set to zero so we'll traverse straight across rather than having an angle like we would cut a relief with. Let's rotate us back around here and we need to go back to 90 degrees. Excuse my head here. We'll verify that in a moment. Pull our center out, we can take our diamond out and put it away. Add our centers back in here. to happen. We want to use this end here. Now this set screw that I put on these is not original to the corn. It's something I've added because I added a flat to the bars, both the long bar and the short bar, to hold them in alignment. Come off of there. So it just indexes on a flat on there. Oh, we'll have to realign this now. We'll take our short bar out. And we'll slide our long bar in here. farther back out of the way here. Now what I want is our tap set on this center. And this tailstock will go on and it will align on this flat with the set screw which will put these two in plane. This is where the corn gets kind of fiddly to do a lot of this stuff. Is It just takes some messing around with to get everything aligned and set where it should be. Now that indexes us, and now we're locked in plane there. So, let's lock this in so it can't go any place. Now what I would like to do is I think we want to slide it on back here. And then what we want is we want to set our depth stop. so that we'll bottom out here. And 
that is the full extent of where we can go with that. So if we set there, let's get our tap back out of the way so we can finish tightening this down. That locks our long bar in position there. Check our alignment again. That looks better. That looks better. Maybe just a little bit more. Check all of our settings. Stick our tap back in here. Alright, now we're all locked in position. All we have to do is we unlock our main rail. We can slide it back and forth to whatever position we want. Hopefully. And then we'll adjust our depth by, really, or by uh, backing off our micrometer screw on that end. I think that looks pretty good. Double check our setup here. Zero. That should be pretty good. So I think we'll go ahead and give it a try here.
Okay, and that's basically the procedure. I'll continue to work it back and forth until we get it um, down to dimension. But we are getting a nice even grind here. I don't know if you're going to be able to, to see that very well. You can see that relief going on there. And that's pretty uniform all the way around. I'm very happy with that. Looks like alignment's pretty good. And uh, I won't make you sit through all of this, but we'll uh, go ahead and, and uh, continue grinding. And then I'll bring you back. You can kind of see the, the beginning of the cut right there. And it tapers with the relief. You know, we're still cutting here, but it trails back to our trailing edge. So, And that's consistent all the way around on each one of the flutes. So I'm real happy with that. So, Anyway, I'll continue on. When we get closer, well, I'll bring it back and we can take another look at this. For all intents and purposes, we are done with this little project, I think. We'll uh, stone the inside edge just to break any little sharp edges, but uh, I think it'll do a real fine job. Now what I may do with this, I may set it back up and uh, grind some flats on the end just so it would actually fit in the tap wrench and retain. We've got a little flat that's been ground in here. but. Uh, this is actually a straight shank at this point in time, so. But yeah, that I think will work really well. We'll, uh, we'll try it out. We may have to go back and sharpen it, but that's not a big deal. We just set it up to run parallel again. We'll have to form a wheel for it, because I haven't formed anything for these. But we can form up a wheel and go ahead and gullet that again to sharpen it. But yeah. I think we've got a good useful little tap for what we want to do. Hopefully that gives you a little insight about how I'm sharpening up some of these taps. And uh, any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.